Welcome back to Hard for Games Gaiden. Today we are talking about people who lie about owning development equipment, prototype games, all of that rare stuff that we're always looking for. I'm your host, Tony, and Hard for Games Gaiden is our sideshow where we talk about gaming news, gaming topics, or just whatever is on our minds. And with Hard for Games Gaiden, I do not show my face like our normal show, because if I'm talking about something topical, by the time I light it, shoot it, and edit it, it's no longer topical. This week, there wasn't much in terms of gaming news that I was particularly interested in. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, there were the people that were offended that Wolfenstein was anti-Nazi suddenly, and, and by suddenly, I mean for the past, like, 30 years, but I uh, didn't really consider that newsworthy, <laughs> so whatever. But today, we are talking about a story from my personal experience. Ever since we as Hard for Games started dumping and preserving rare prototypes, 64DD blue discs, you know, we've been contacted a good amount. Not a ton, but a good amount by people who claim to actually own these. Now, some people are just plain awesome. And they're friendly, they want info, they want us to help them, and are even like, hey, you know what? Showcase this on your channel. Go for it. Uh, that's how I found out about you guys. Go ahead. And we just think that's so cool, so awesome, because then we get to show it to you guys, right? That's kind of the point, right? In addition, obviously, to preserving history and, and all that good stuff, but we are we are a YouTube channel, so we do want to actually show what we find, of course. And frankly, you know, you got to understand that this takes a lot of trust, right? Uh, you're putting your trust in a total stranger, really, to ship, you know, this rare item, have it tested, have it returned to you, all of that. I mean, it just... It takes a lot of trust. There, there's no way around it. You have to be a trusting person to, to even fathom this. But there are also some people in some other categories. Uh, you know, some people just contact us for info on their rare items and their rare games, uh, which is totally fine. I'm happy to help out with that. If I actually know what I'm talking about, I may defer to other people who may know more than me, especially if it's a system or game I'm not particularly familiar with. But hey, you know, some people are just like, you know what, I got this, I'm confused about it. What do you know? And I'm, I'm happy to share what I actually do or do not know. And then there are some people that are kind of, that have contacted us in the past that are kind of like on the fence. It's, it's kind of weird, you know, they, they contact us and they have these, they have these rare N64 dev cards, you know, the tall ones. And, you know, I've had people who have had these and they're like, what do you think about these? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. They're not labeled. I can't really tell you anything about it. Uh, I would have to test it, you know, we would have to dump it and actually figure it out. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and send it to you. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. And then with this particular category of people, for some reason, nine times out of ten, they lose their job, <laughs> right? The day before that they're going to go ahead and ship it so they can't afford the, the uh, shipping fee. To which I say, hey, you know what? Uh, we would love to showcase this on our channel and tell you what, I'll, I'll reimburse you for the shipping fee. Go ahead and get me the tracking info, show me the receipt, and I'll reimburse you. And then I guess because they lost their job that they must have lost their internet too because normally when I offer that they just go dark just go complete radio silence off the grid living in the woods they're gone they're they're just boom they're they're out of there which again you know sending something like that takes a lot of trust so I mean do I blame these people maybe only for lying uh you know it's cool to just say hey I'm not there yet or hey that's cool you know, I'm not, I'm not going to ship it. Just to be honest with you, I was just looking for info. This has gone too far, whatever. Not interested. Fine, cool, totally cool. But I think part, partially due to our internet society where we can kind of just get away with anything, you know, saying, oh, I lost my job. You know, I, I can't afford to ship it. It's just easy for people. Whatever, whatever, you know. I don't, I don't have a right to any of these people's games for them to ship it to me, but, I mean, if they've contacted me, they kind of led me on, and then they kind of, you know, go dark. So I guess that's kind of the frustration, but whatever, you know, it, it, uh, it happens. You know, there's another category of people, 
and these people contact me to say, I am sending you this. It doesn't start off as a curiosity and then lead to that. They're just like, you know what, I want to send you this. And I've had people, this one guy contacted me, he had a demo N64 DD disc, I believe it was uh, Doshin the Giant, had some tall dev carts that I was uh, really interested in taking a look at uh, N64 wise. And we're going back and forth, we're going back and forth. He's sending me pictures like, all right, great, you know, I'm gonna send you this stuff. I'm gonna take a, I, I'm gonna be going out of town for a while, but when I get back, I'm gonna ship it. And he gets back in town after a couple of weeks, sends me an email and is like, oh, hey, I just went on this amazing trip, da 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 da. Here's a YouTube link of a video from my trip because I took it through my company that I own. He also asked, you know, what is the best carrier? How should I actually ship this, right? So I answer the question and I take a look at the, the YouTube link that he sends me and it is a video of his social media marketing company. And it's all about how he's traveling around the world and he's able to afford it because he's so great on social media and there's all these testimonials of all these people who he's helped, I think on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, I can't remember, it's been a while. And it's just this huge, like fireworks of a video, like amazing, da da da, da fantastic. But I didn't really say anything about it because I wasn't, you know, you know, I was like, oh, cool. I'm, you know, glad you enjoyed yourself on your trip, that kind of thing. Wow, that's fun. But I wasn't like, hey, sign me up for your program. And I think he was either A, offended, or B, the entire email chain was just a way to get me to sign up for his program. I think retrospectively, none of it was actually real. He just wanted to kind of bait and switch me. And after I told him what carrier was best, he never responded again to say that he had shipped it. So I, you know, follow up and I'm like, hey, you know, did you ship this? Like what's going on? Like we would still be very interested in, in taking a look at this and nothing. Radio silence, radio silence. And then there are people that just lie, 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 lie from start to finish. And they just can't stop. They just can't help themselves. And there's something particularly uh, beyond suspicious, I would say sinister, about this next individual. Now, I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to say his name's Alex for now. It's not really Alex, but we're just going to call him Alex. So Alex sends me this email. And again, I'm not going to reveal his email address or anything like that. I don't want people bothering him or spamming him. I was looking through my late father's basement after his passing and I found two things I think you might find interesting. One is a blue cart for the DD with a blank white label other than the letter Z written in blue pen. Obviously, he's trying to bait me with Zelda here. The other was a dev cart of Quest 64. Now recently we had done a Quest 64 beta quest. So it was kind of too convenient, right? So if something's too convenient, it probably isn't real. I followed up with this and actually kind of kept asking him questions just to see what he would say to see if this was real or not. So he goes on and on. And eventually he goes, originally, I said only a Z was written on the cart. But after further inspection, I realized there is more. Most is too faded to read, but I have made out a few things. I could be wrong. Hashtag equals unreadable. Hashtag, hashtag L, hashtag space easy, hashtag U, hashtag, hashtag. So we had talked previously on the channel about I guess you would call it like the internal code name. I can't remember exactly what we called it because it was so long ago. But basically, L, Z, Legend of Zelda, E is expansion. So he's trying to tell me that he found Ur Zelda. He's continuing to bait me here. So finally I get this guy on Skype because I'm thinking to myself, all right, you know, if, 
this is real. I'll get him on Skype and he can show me these with him, right? You know, I get him on Skype finally and I say, you know, it probably would be easier if we did a call via Skype. I'll ring you in a moment. He says, oh, I'm sorry. I can't really talk to the fact that while I'm in Michigan with my mom, I do not have access to my computer that has a mic. I will be back home in Pennsylvania in three days. Then I will have a mic then. I should have brought my mic. I said, you're in Michigan? Same here. Of course, I realize that he knows that I live in Michigan. And he just keeps trying to, like, bring up these coincidences. He's trying to, like, get me to just continue to talk, I think. Possibly trust him? I don't know. It was strange. So I ask him, by the way, you know, I forgot to ask, can you send some images of the DD disc and the carts and send them over to me? And he said, oh, you know, my phone died and my mom has no charger. So I'm messaging you on a Windows XP computer on a CRT monitor. So when I get home, I will go buy a charge and then send, I guess. So he's out of state without a phone charger, I guess. Okay. So he's going back and forth and, you know, I kind of stop contacting him because I know it's BS at this point, right? And he just keeps contacting me. He just won't stop lying. At one point, he goes, okay, so I just found something on the back of the unlabeled cart. It says, hashtag equals I can't read, P hashtag 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 however many, D A hashtag K. Okay, so he's basically trying to tell me that he found a dev perfect dark, right? It's, it's BS. After a while, you know, he just keeps contacting him and I say, listen, you can go ahead and just ship those here whenever you're ready. We can go ahead and take a look at them. So I send him the Hard for Games address. And this is, it doesn't really seem like it from what he said, but for some reason, I just felt that this was somewhat insidious. Because he goes, okay, I'll write that down. You should get a P.O. box. Unless that's like, not your address. And something about him just lying so much and just refusing to stop contacting me made me feel really weird about this because it seemed like he was kind of saying gotcha and and maybe i'm just reading into this the wrong way but just for whatever reason again just all of the lies all of the weirdness him telling me that i should really get a p.o box almost sounded like a warning like hey you should have a p.o box because now I have your address. And, and again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But it just, it was weird. And that's when I say, well, that is a P.O. box. Because it is. It, Hard for Games has a P.O. box. And he goes, oh, okay. You know, and like tries to just continue per normal. But it was weird, man. Like, it was weird. This story doesn't really have a neat ending, necessarily. He just kind of faded away for a while. He did at one point suggest that we meet while he was in Michigan, and I told him, okay, but uh, John from the show has to come. But he pretended to be scared and started saying all of these things about John being intimidating. He said, I feel like if I say something wrong or stupid, he will like hate me or something. I don't know. So basically, he was just trying to meet me alone. It was just weird. And under normal circumstances, I would never share a chat that I had with someone. But the fact that this guy was just such a liar. Such a liar. I just feel like it was kind of shareable. And I guess the moral of the story is, is, you know, be careful online. Be careful who you trust online, especially if people are trying to contact you like this. Uh, 
And, you know, it's entirely possible that this guy was maybe just a fan of the show and just wanted to, like, have an excuse, even if it was a lie, to kind of catfish me into talking to him, which I don't really fully understand because we're such a small YouTube channel. Why wouldn't you try to catfish someone bigger? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're, like, comparatively, like, pretty tiny uh, compared to a lot of the uh, other channels that I watch, at least. But uh, it was just really bizarre, really strange. And again, no neat tie-up for this. No, like, and then boom, here was the climax. But uh, just kind of wanted to talk about my experience with people contacting me about dev stuff. And, uh, you know, overall, it's been very positive. But there's just been some people that are just real far out there. <laughs> I guess that's all I could say. Either way, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Thank you for clicking that like button. And we will see you all next time. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.